Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 4.4 .4, called the Metal Activity Series, What Destroys a Metal? Now before we start talking about the Metal Activity Series and um, what metal reacts with, we first need to talk about the different types of metals. Um, one class of metals are metals that are not very reactive. These are our precious metals. These are things that we know of, like platinum, gold, and silver. These are usually what jewelry are made out of, you know, platinum, gold, and silver. And we cho we've chosen these materials because they're not very reactive, meaning we can wear gold necklaces or gold rings in many different environments, and that gold will stand the test of time because it isn't very reactive. Um, on the other hand, there are very reactive metals, things such as sodium, lithium, and potassium. These are so reactive that they react violently with water. And, you know, with our bodies being mostly composed of water, we wouldn't want to wear those as bracelets or rings or necklaces. Um, then there are metals that are in between. They're not extremely reactive, but they're definitely not inert or unreactive. Things like copper, zinc, and aluminum. Now, early chemists tried to create precious metals from other metals, but they were unsuccessful in doing so. But what they did discover during these experiments was that metals have differing reactivities. This is the same thing that we observed in our investigation. So in your investigation you had two different solutions and you tested three metals in each solution. And the, I guess, synopsis or overview is down here. We have our copper sulfate solution there and our hydrochloric acid solution. So in one reaction we had copper sulfate or copper 2 sulfate reacting with magnesium and we definitely got a positive reaction. We definitely saw something happening there. Then we had copper sulfate reacting with zinc and another positive reaction. And lastly with the copper sulfates, copper sulfate reacted with copper metal and there was no reaction. On the other side with the test tubes, we had hydrochloric acid reacting with magnesium, and there was a big positive reaction. It was quite exothermic. Um, the test tube got very hot. Then we had hydrochloric acid reacting with zinc metal, and again, a positive reaction. Not quite as reactive as the magnesium, but still a positive reaction. And then you had hydrochloric acid reacting with copper metal, and there seemed to be no reaction. Now, we can start to predict whether these reactions are going to take place or not. Meaning, before we even put magnesium in the test tube with copper to sulfate, we could predict whether this reaction would happen, yes, or not happen, no. We can do that by first looking at the metals involved. By metals, I'm talking about... In this case, if we look at the reaction that I just mentioned, I'm talking about the copper here and the magnesium. Those are two metals. Look at those two things. Now, if a positive reaction occurs, then the single solid metal is more reactive than the metal that is a part of the compound. Meaning magnesium, which is single metal and the solid, it's more reactive than the copper, which is a part of the copper sulfate, the compound. Now we can use the metal activity series. And that's this chart here that has just a simple list of atoms here that are ranging from most reactive at the top all the way down to least reactive at the bottom. Now we look at the metals that are in our particular reaction um, and find them on this chart. So for example, here we have copper sulfate and magnesium, as I just mentioned in my last example. So I find them on the chart. I look for copper, and as I look down here for copper, I see copper right here. So right in this line here, that's copper. I look for magnesium. Magnesium's up here. Now according to this scale here, or this arrow, the most reactive metals are on top, and you decrease in your reactivity as you go down. 
So magnesium being up here is going to be more reactive than copper. So magnesium can come into this union here between copper and the sulfate and break it up. And we see a positive reaction. This is called a single replacement reaction. We've talked about these in the past. And here's the example here. Well, here is an example. Here's an example with copper, sulfate, and zinc. So again, first things first, we have to find them here on the chart. So we find copper. We already know where that one is already. That one is here. Copper. And zinc is right here. Zinc is more reactive than copper, meaning it's higher on the metal activity series than copper. Thus, it's going to replace copper in this single replacement reaction. When it does, think of it, it kicks copper out of this union here. And as a result, in our product side, we have copper as a single metal now, and zinc is now with the sulfate. It's taken its spot. The same thing can happen with um, hydrogen here in our next example. In our next example, we have hydrogen down here. It's not a metal, but it still is such a very powerful substance, well, such a powerful substance that it falls and is giving kind of credit on this metal activity series. And we can see it right here. So it kind of separates a lot of the active metals from those that are not as active or reactive. So hydrogen is here. So when hydrogen, which is my, I'm going to say our cation here, reacts with zinc, we find zinc now on the table, and zinc is up here. Since zinc is more reactive than hydrogen, meaning it's higher on the activity series, it will come in and replace hydrogen in this uh, compound with the chlorine here. And as you can see, it kicks it out, and we get hydrogen by itself. Since it's diatomic, we know it has to be H2 when it's by itself. And we get zinc now with the chlorine. That is another single replacement reaction. Now let's look at the next example. In my next example, I have hydrochloric acid reacting with copper. Now we did this in the lab. So if we look, we find copper and we find hydrochloric acid again. Sorry, we find hydrogen. Hydrogen is here. And copper is right below it. Now, hydrogen is more reactive than copper in this case. So since our single element is less reactive than our element that's here in the compound, this will not come and replace that hydrogen in the compound. Thus, we see no reaction. So this is the metal activity series. We use this to predict whether reactions will happen between a, a metal and a um, essentially an ionic compound in solution. Now, video that just shows you kind of uh, how this happens in terms of an animation. You know, I like my analogy, so here's one that we can we can kind of use. So I'll play this for you. This is copper sulfate. They're just having a good old time. Wait for it. Here comes zinc. Uh oh. <laughs> Wait. 
for copper. So this can happen not only with the zinc and the copper sulfate as we as we see here, but also it can happen with zinc and sulfuric acid, iron and hydrochloric acid. It can happen with a bunch of different substances. Can that a bunch of different substances can go through single replacement reactions. Um, you just need a single substance that is reacting with a compound that's aqueous in solution. So with that, that is single replacement. In this video, just they're getting back together, dancing. Same old thing. Now, this kind of the basis for a uh, an area of chemistry called electrochemistry. And this is this the study of the transfer of electrons from one reactant to another. So these single replacement reactions happen because of the movement of electrons. Electrons are going from one substance to another, causing this single replacement, this little switcheroo here. Um, next class, we'll talk more about that, gentlemen. Take notes. Adios.